Hi, this is Lisa and welcome to my channel. Thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to do the last section of dressing this traditional size Brayer doll. We're going to work on the jacket and uh, you can find the pattern linked below and I appreciate anybody who supports my channel. Really appreciate it since I spent a lot of time making these patterns and uh, the uh, pattern does have written instructions with pictures as well, as this can be quite complicated. Now you can probably glue or hand stitch this, but I've used a sewing machine for the whole thing and it comes on and off. It's not, it's not permanently on the doll. Just a note that I won't be showing myself actually sewing it, but I will show you all the stitching as it's done. Uh, the reason I don't show sewing is because I don't have a proper setup for that in my house. Let's get started. For this jacket, I'm using a navy because this is the best thing for me in a hunter ring. You can also use a dark green or very dark color. And this is something you would use for a windbreaker. It's woven, no stretch, and it's a lightweight windbreaker material in polyester. I think I paid $2 a meter for this. You can find the pattern linked below, and I thank you very much for everybody's support. What we're gonna do with this pattern, first of all, make sure that it is five inches here or whatever it is. This isn't the final pattern, so yours may differ a little. Then we're gonna cut each piece out and we're looking for two of each except for the center back, which is only one. To do that, I'm gonna cut them out of the paper first. And then with the right sides of the fabric together, I have two layers. I'm going to pin that on top and cut them out. When you're cutting these out, make sure you use sharp scissors so you get clean lines. And I find when I'm done, I like to keep all my pattern pieces still pinned in a plastic container. We're going to start on assembly. For assembly, I'm going to be sewing with a sewing machine, so you'll need matching thread. Optionally, you can also hand sew along these seams or you could glue them. Now the seam allowances I've allowed are a quarter inch. I won't be showing myself sewing because I haven't got a good setup to show a sewing machine, but I will show you each time I've done a stitch and what I've done. Here we have the back pieces. There's the center back and the two side back pieces. So we're gonna take those and overlap them. I'm gonna pin this top piece here just to show you. Then with a quarter inch seam allowance, gonna sew down from there to just there, leaving this section open. Make sure you backstitch or secure at that one point. So just one row and then do the same with the other side. Here I have the two seams sewn and right above where this ends, I'm just gonna give a little stitch so that the seam will open above the stitches on both sides. With an iron, press those seams open. Now I have those pressed open. I'm going to put this down and line up this seam, fold it inside and press that down. Same with this one. And when I flip that over, we've started a vent. Here we are after pressing. That's the inside and the outside. And those two little pieces that stick up from the seam, I'm just gonna trim those off. And I'm gonna take that to the sewing machine and just do a little tack here and a little tack here with stitches. You can see where I've done those diagonal stitches to hold the vents. If your fabric frays, then apply fray check along these edges. Mine does not, so it's not a problem. I'm just gonna leave it so it's nice and thin as possible on the doll. With the front now, I'm gonna take the right sides together on the front and the back. Make sure the uh, sleeves are on the same side line up 
the shoulder and stitch the shoulders. So we'll do one on that side and one on this side. Now that I have these done together, I'm going to open these seams and press them open. To see how the facing works, I've just left the pattern on top of these. These are all right side up. So if I remove that, this is the neckline and this is the part that'll be open. So I'm gonna take that and fold it, stitch that there, and then do the same on that side so that it looks like that. Stitch both sides of the facing and press that open. I'm gonna trim off any pieces that stick out from the seams. Now, if you have a problem with fraying, you can apply fray check to the outside edge, but not this edge. When you're sewing on your collar, you're gonna be lining it up with the center at the back. However, to make this easy in miniature, I put a little line here and that's where you're gonna start. So if we have that on here, that is where you're gonna line it up and then you're going to stitch so that it comes all the way around here and on the other side, it'll meet with a similar line. Now when you're sewing the collar, you're only gonna sew from here to here and you're gonna leave that little bit free. So it's just gonna be along here like that onto both here and the facing side. Take the right side of your facing to the right side of your main piece. And we're going to line that up all the way around. So along this edge and then stop when you're gonna be stitching where this stitching starts for the collar and you're gonna go up the collar across the collar, back down to where the stitching starts, across and all the way back down to the hem. Now you're very careful when you're doing this collar section. You can go down to that point and across and that'll give you your point to your collar. Here I've pinned the right sides together. So you can see here when you're coming up through here, you're gonna carefully turn, and then right here, where this stitch ends, you're gonna go up the collar, across the collar, and then here you're gonna do the same thing, down to where that stitch ends, and across and down. Once you've sewn that, I'm gonna take the scissors and cut off any corners, and into where the turns are. Now we're going to return that right side out, turning the collar and with some pokey thing, poke out the collar. Once you've got that turned, iron, iron these seams flat. Get a nice smooth finish and try to get the collar as neat as possible. That's what it should look like right now. Now with right sides together, I'm going to attach the sleeve sewing along here. And this is going to roll as I stitch to the other side. Now that the sleeve's attached, we're gonna turn it under quarter inch and hem both of those. Once you've hemmed that, if you have any overhang, Trim that fairly close to the stitches because otherwise it'll poke out when you try to get the doll's hand in there. Now taking your front and back together for the side seams and your sleeve, you're gonna stitch up the side seam, turn and down the hem of the, sorry, down the sleeve. Now at the end of the sleeve, I'm just gonna trim that corner so you don't see it sticking out. It's in use and turn the sleeves right side out. 
Now at the bottom, I'm gonna fold it up about a quarter of an inch and press that hem into place. And once I have it all pressed, I'm gonna take it over to the sewing machine and sew the hem. And that includes the vent. I'm just gonna fold that up and hem that as well. Make sure it's even all the way around. If there's any pieces sticking out after the hem is done, just give those a trim off. And if you need to apply fray check anywhere, there's a good time, plus trimming off any of the threads. As the inside of the jacket facing me, I'm gonna roll the collar just a tiny bit so that this collar is over the back one, so the seam is more for, is further back. And pin that. And then what I wanna do is top stitch along the front, over, up, along the top with that rolled back, rolled back because you want to be able to see the seam from the outside. So when you roll it, then it hides. Then down, along, and over. So top stitching all the way along the edge. I now have this on the doll and I've got a piece of Velcro. I've cut that a quarter of an inch wide by an inch long. And right now I have both sides there. I am going to peel off one side of that. Once I have the tape off, I'm gonna put it under the right side as she's wearing it. Like that. And then I'm gonna peel the tape off the other side. I still see two pieces are connected here. I'm just gonna peel off the tape on the other side. Once that's peeled off, I wanna make sure that's lined up with just the amount of overlap that it should have. Lining up the hems. And then glue down the Velcro onto the other side. For the pockets, you can sew yourself a set of pockets. However, what I'm gonna do here is take a 1 8 piece of black leather and cut that about a half an inch, cut two of those, and then I am gonna glue those on where the pockets would be, one on each side. For the buttons, I use some two millimeter wide rhinestones, but you can use beads, you can sew them on, you can glue them on. Now this is my sample jacket, so there's been a lot of things going on behind the scenes and that's why it's a bit of a mess, but uh, put one button just below where the collar breaks, one around where the pockets are, this much up, about a centimeter up from the bottom, and then one in the middle. One way to make buttons is to use a hole punch with the smallest hole on some leather lace. And then using a pin, I took out the centers and got myself some buttons. Now, when you're setting up for a ride and drive, I actually have a saddle in here because she's going to, uh, in the class, she's going to get out of the cart and put a saddle on the horse and ride at Hunter. So she will remove her, um, underneath here she has her breeches because here she will remove her apron after driving. She has a whip that's in the right hand. You hold the reins like you would English where it comes under and over. The reins should be taut, not loose, depending on the horse you're using. Quarter horses often have it loose. Uh, and the whip should be about that angle right there. Make sure your bit is in place for the horse's mouth. And I use some uh, dots for that, little sticky dots. And you get that at the uh, scrapbook section of Michael's or whatever. Uh, you have to make sure that your blinkers aren't touching the horse's eyes, that everything is symmetrical, that there is tautness through here. If the horse is moving, you don't want this to be slack. If he's standing, it's okay. Um, that everything is adjusted properly, that your whip, everything is glued in properly for your show. And there should be a direct line basically from your elbows through to the horse's mouth as much as possible as you have this in the way.